Good morning or evening, everyone. Now time to wrap up the last third of the Battle of the Bulge campaign. We have finally reached a large gasoline depot, which is called a warehouse for some reason, despite the fact that it's got no walls and no roof. And I thought a warehouse meant a building, but yeah, this is going to be several thousand gallons worth of... Actually, I would say probably say million, because... It's a few hundred gallons per barrel, and there's going to be a huge number of barrels. Anyway, mission, last fortress, Arden. So it's still the same day. This entire campaign takes place in the span of a single day in less than a three-hour period. Amazing how much we got, we got four guys can do in two and a half hours. Well, we... less than two hours, in fact. Unbelievable. There is an allied warehouse in front of us, guarded by German paratroopers. Careful, they are very dangerous, and in many ways, better than us. I'm not sure what that means. But then again, the people who wrote this down, English is not their first language. It's obvious we're dealing with Fallschirmjäger again, except instead of orange uniforms, they're wearing some kind of greenish-white. Yep, yep, yep. It looks like we are surrounded. The large supply warehouse, the only reasonable place suitable for defense, is held by a platoon of German paratroopers, probably armed with an assault gun. Our only hope is to quickly overrun the warehouse and take control of the enemy field gun. Then we have to get ready, fortify ourselves against the attack, and hope that we will be able to hold on until the arrival of American units who are attacking in this sector. The battery of heavy mortars is located not far away, so we may expect to be shelled by them. The warehouse should have a bomb shelter that will protect us from the worst. We start the mission here. Primary goal, to take the warehouse. Secondary goal, to hold the position until the arrival of reinforcements. Yeah, the irony is that the reinforcements aren't scripted to show up until after we've already killed everyone, <laughs> or at least destroyed the enemy tanks. I remember the enemy that our guys would in engage with the reinforcements. I mean, I remember... The shit, I screwed that up. I'm too sleepy at the moment. I recall... The reinforcements engaging enemy soldiers, but this was after the tanks were destroyed. So, yeah. They still only conveniently arrive after the armor has been destroyed, so the Shermans are useless. Tartar sauce. Oh, hey. Oh, who am I kidding? Yeah, I remember... I remember long ago my old man played this and as usual he would skip over the instructions and not really pay attention and he would immediately assume things about this stoog here. 
he would immediately assume that it was armed, and so you'd flank it and blow it up. Apparently, there's no one operating it, thankfully. Nobody's going to make a run for it, hopefully. In the original game, the vanilla game, you could see vehicles that were prepared to enter the map that haven't entered the map here on the wooden table outside of this sawdust-made map model. Over here would be... Oh! Huh. We'll all be. The friendly Shermans that are prepared to arrive are, are visible, but not the panther that arrives here and the tiger that's here behind us. Oh man. If you can't fire this thing standing up, oh, that's too bad. I had high hopes. Well, in that case, abort the mission. Now that I think about it, we're not going to need that. What you are going to need, in fact, you're useless. Someone with a bit more strength is necessary. Oh, yeah, a little, a little grave site that Jacob added to the map. Pretty cool. And it suddenly occurred to me that this is not going to work because, oh, what's his name with the shotgun? Yeah, you should be the driver. Two machine guns is better than one, right?
hopefully this weather conceals us just like it conceals the enemy. Yep, normally that tower's unoccupied, but Jacob went and added someone. You'll be like a ghost in this blizzard, hopefully. And you bloody missed. Yeah, it's too bad camo doesn't really work in this game. Then again, what'd you expect from a game as old as this? This man, this tower is so high up that I can feel the creaking. Holy crap. Maybe that creaking was not something I was hallucinating about after all. <laughs> well, we. That uh, weapon thing you told me about, Jacob, was that in reference to the 50 caliber not registering certain shots? Was that the question you were answering? I need a recon plane. Let's see who's shooting at us. 
Something's out there that's shooting anti-tank weapons at us nice and quickly. <coughs> Reloading is too fast for it to be an 88. Another dead end road, just like the one in uh, what you called Road of Pinamunda. I hope these mines don't destroy the fun. Close enough. Oh, we can't allow the crowds to get away with this gas, so.
you know, the tragic irony of that song is that the best, absolutely best rendition of it is an incomplete version. And yes, I'm talking about that version from the movie. It's unfortunately incomplete. It's just the first two stanzas of the song on a loop. Not an authentic, not the even, not the whole thing. The next best thing would be a uh, one sw sung by, I think they're Swedish, or perhaps Swiss Germans. And it's for the Hearts of Iron game. I mean, it's good, good, don't get me wrong, but it's just lacking the spark. It lacks the accent. Mmm, much better than the previous version. The previous version was very blocky and chalky, if that makes sense. Well, better save it because I don't want to damage that radio. Oh man, I didn't want to do that. And contrary to popular belief, no, it is not a Nazi song. It's a song dedicated to people who drive it. We like driving tanks. Absolutely. Jacob, Jacob, I must compliment you. This thing is much improved. Now, I like the Nebel Warfare and the 88. This Stug has a pair of redundant seats. They're redundant in this game, but they're not redundant in real life. Like, that right there would be the loader, and this, I think... I'm not sure what this seat would be. Probably another assistant loader. But yeah, it's got four seats, but only two of them have any use. The driver and the gunner. And unfortunately, the gunner sticks his head out a little bit. No idea why. The Sherman was not originally part of the game, but I begged Jacob to add it in because, hey, you know, it's, uh, it makes sense because the Germans did historically capture some of our, our Shermans. Yeah, and the, the enemy can also shoot through this little slit here. The last one must be the one all the way over there. Well, this thing's got the most of the fuel, so... My guys are only ever able to get their aim once the enemy has them as well. It's kind of like playing knives with my little brother. He can stab me with an imaginary knife, but I can't stab him without him magically pretending that he's also got a knife.
thing seems to be driving a bit sluggish now for some reason. As if there's some kind of lag. Unfortunately, can't rely on the bot to fire the gun properly because this thing, well, it's just a gun that has, you have to turn the whole tank in order to aim the gun. Let's see. Enemy ar artillery, thankfully didn't ga detonate any of the gasoline, but they did destroy a few of the sheds, as well as this large reserve over here. Although how they set a, uh, a water cooler tank a water tower on fire, no idea. Send me a recon map. Do you detect anything? Roger that. Panzer IV detected. Flying down the main highway, another tank spotted. Another Panzer IV. Hopefully it's not just those two Panzer IVs. I want more tanks. a bunch of paratroopers doing eating a tank. In fact, how did they get their hands on the Stug? It's weird. I always thought that the paratroopers who took over the fuel depot were dropped by plane. It's too bad we didn't get to have what the the movie portrayed. Let's see, save it here. What are... Say hi to our American reinforcements and get some on this Jeep. Uh oh. I'm running out of time.
come on. These guys don't follow commands anymore. I mean, I can understand why the Russians would ignore commands, but not the Americans. They speak the same language, almost. Did you ever watch uh, Kelly's Heroes? Because, I, in fact, now that I think about it, I probably already asked you that. I think I remember you saying that you were going to attach speakers to the Shermans and have them playing music, and I brought up Kelly's Heroes, but I don't remember now. So, 35 enemies, 38 enemies, 212 bullets fired, and actually that includes tank rounds as well. It's too bad, uh, yeah, the 1965 film was so inaccurate about this huge number of King Tigers. It would been pretty funny if the uh, we had to defend the depot against a dozen of those. But anyway, they ran out of gas, and they all they can all just walk on home. All right, folks, please hit the like button and subscribe, and have a good day.